All right, so I want to uh, do a, another online video this week um, just to uh, do a derivation for you, and so I don't have to do this in class, so we can do other things instead. So I'm just going to consider the mathematics of resonance. So we'll talk about the physics of resonance more in class. Um, let me just take you through the math. Okay, so we're going to consider a driven oscillator system. That's where we can find resonance um, behavior. And the system I'll consider is a mass on a spring on a friction, well, let's say a friction surface with friction because we're going to include some damping in the end. Um, but then I'm going to, instead of just uh, letting it, uh, pulling it back, letting it go, letting it oscillate, I'm going to drive it continuously. And here's how I might do that. So I might take a motor that drives a cylinder, for example. So this is going to rotate around continuously. And I'll attach a rod that has a, a fixed point on one end on that motor and then it's attached right here. Okay, and so what's going to happen is this is going to result in this uh, point of the system being forced back and forth. Okay, and so if what this effectively is going to do is give rise to an, 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 a, a force that's an additional force on the mass that looks like some amplitude times cosine of omega t. Now here I'm using omega as a given variable. So I'm going to turn the knob of the motor to set the frequency at which I make this thing go back and forth here. Okay, And that's omega. Now of course this system has its own natural frequency. If I kick it, it's going to oscillate with omega naught. If there's no damping, right, that frequency is root k over m. So I'm going to call that omega naught, which is the natural frequency. Okay. So I, what I want to do is just focus on analyzing this mathematically, and we'll talk more about what it means physically in class. Um, so if I have, if I write down my equation of motion, mx double dot is minus kx. That's the spring force, assuming it, the unstretched position is x equal to zero, um, and then I have some damping due to friction. So I'll model that with bv, and then I'm going to have my forcing term. Okay, that's a function of time. All right. Now it turns out that the mathematics of this is not completely well. It's it's more complicated than I'm going to spend time um, explaining. Um, it, let me say that again. Uh, it turns out that it depends on how you uh, turn on the force. Okay. What we're going to do here is consider this force uh, f equals f naught cosine omega t, and we'll assume that it's been on forever, okay? So in reality, you might imagine you, you'll throw a switch on the motor, and it will start driving it back and forth. Now, it turns out if you do that, when you turn the switch on, it's as if you just kicked the mass, okay? So if you had a mass sitting there on a track, like we've done in class, and you just hit it, it's going to oscillate, but it's going to oscillate at the natural frequency, okay, which is our... Um, our root k over m. Okay, so the idea if you kick it and walk away, it's going to oscillate at that frequency. But we're not going to walk away. We're going to keep pushing on it at a, at this frequency omega, which may not be the same as omega naught. So it turns out that in as, as soon as you turn on the motor, you'll have both frequencies present. The mass wants to oscillate its, at its own frequency here, but at the same time, you keep pushing it at this frequency. Um, what will happen is with if you wait long enough, this guy over here, this oscillation, will die away due to damping, okay? And all that will be left is motion at this frequency, omega. Now, I haven't proven that to you. Um, I'm not going to prove it to you, but it turns out that's what happens. And so I'm going to look at the long time behavior. So in other words, I'm going to let t go to infinity or equivalently assume that the motor's been on forever before I look at the system, okay, or for a long time. It doesn't have to be forever, but, well, infinity is forever, I suppose. Um, and in that situation, in steady state, um, and when I mean steady state, I mean that um, it's still oscillating, so it's not just sitting still, but it's oscillating with a fixed amplitude, and um, it's oscillating at one frequency, okay? Um, that the, the solution in steady state will be that the motion of the mass will have the same frequency as the driver, okay? Now, it may not be at the same. What, what remains to be determined then, if I know the frequency and I know it acts like a cosine, what I need to determine is the um, amplitude and the phase of the oscillation. So I'm going to have a cosine omega t 
plus phi as the solution, plus phi, um, but I don't know a and phi. Okay, that's what I'm going to determine here because um, uh, the, I'm driving it with this um, forcing, and um, I sh I'll make a physical argument here to help you understand what we're doing. We drive it with the forcing. What you can think about that is continuously pumping energy into the system. If I keep kicking it and kicking it and kicking it, I'm giving it little pushes and I'm giving it energy. And so um, if there's no damping in the system, and for example, I drive it at the resonant frequency, if I keep kicking it at omega naught, the amplitude of the oscillation will continue to grow. Okay, so I keep kicking it in phase is the idea. The amplitude of the oscillation will continue to grow, and it will grow to infinity because there's nowhere for the energy to go. Okay. Um, but if I add some damping, it turns out that the damping can take energy out just as fast as I'm putting it in, and I can reach a steady state where I reach a finite amplitude, okay? And that's what I'm after here, all right? Now, I'll say more about that in class, but um, what I'm looking for is that amplitude that things settle out to in the end, okay? Now, I'm going to use complex exponentials, all right? And so, and, and you'll see why in a second. So, I'm going to write x as a twiddle e to the i omega t. Implied here is that I'm going to take the real part when I'm all done. And the forcing, I'm going to do the same thing. I can write it as f naught, which is real. Now this a twiddle, is, it can be complex. And that's where you get the phase, uh, a phase difference. Now this phi is the phase difference between the driving force, which has no phase, it's just cosine omega t, and the response in the, in the spring. Okay. Um, e to the i omega t. Okay. All right. Now, both of these have an e to the i omega t in them. And so, what I'm going to do is now plug those expressions into the equation above to this one here. Okay. And then I'm going to divide through by e to the i omega t because it's going to be left over as I go through. So, if I do that, I get the following answer. Oops. I've got to get to the right place in my notes. Here we go. So, I get minus omega squared. That comes from second time derivative of x times m. And if I divide through by e to the i omega t, what's left over is just a twiddle in that term. Then I have a minus k a twiddle minus i omega b times a twiddle. Those are all the terms that are proportional to x or x dot or x double dot. Um, and then I'm going to have um, f naught, which is just a constant. Okay. And so now I've got an expression where I have f naught that's given, I have omega that's given, and now I can solve for what the amplitude of the oscillation is, okay, um, in this driven system. And so I can do that. Here we go to the next page. And what I find is that the amplitude, which is complex here, because um, I have, you know, it's going to end up having I explicitly in the expression, as you'll see, goes like the forcing. That's not surprising that the, the, the harder I kick it, um, the more amplitude I'm going to end up with in the end. Um, and then I'm going to have k over m minus omega squared um, plus i omega b over m. Okay? All right, so that's the solution. If I drive this system at frequency omega, this is the amplitude that will result, okay, in the long time limit. And I ignore this transient behavior that I pointed out earlier. Let that decay away. Now, if I have no damping, b goes to zero. So if this term is gone, um, you see that there is a, a if I drive the system at the at the natural frequency. So if omega equals omega naught, so if this and this are equal, this denominator goes to zero. And again, this is gone in this in this limit. I'm ignoring that frequency. And so a goes to infinity. Okay, for omega equal to omega naught. All right. And that's and that uh, is what we expect. So if you if you kick the mass at the right frequency, um, so in phase with the oscillation at the right frequency, you're going to continuously give it energy, and it's going to build up and build up and build up. And if there's nowhere for it to go, the amplitude of the oscillation is going to grow unbounded. Okay. Now, if I add dissipation, I can again I can get a finite amplitude. So this having b finite will remove that singularity, as you might say. Um, and I'll get a finite amplitude. Okay, so let me do one more thing, um, and then the rest of it is going to be discussing the physics, um, which I'll do in class. 
but the one more thing is to write down the magnitude in the phase. So A, if you remember, we have this complex number A. We can always write it as the amplitude of the oscillation times e to the i phi. Okay? And so I want to find those two things. So A is the max is the amplitude of the oscillation, and phi is the relative phase of the mass's motion in time to the um, the forcing. And you know, maybe to explain that a little bit better. So here's time. Uh, here's F and X, and let me do X in red, okay? So F might look like this, because it's a cosine, okay? And X will be at the same frequency, but it might be shifted in phase, like this, okay? And so that's, this is the phase shift phi that I'm, is, it's not between zero and the shift, it's really the relative shift between F and X. This is supposed to be a phi. Okay. All right. So let me write those two down. You can you can solve for those. It's not so straightforward because we do know that um, the magnitude of a twiddle is just the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. But this expression that I have up here, it's not immediately clear. Okay, that I can write it as a real plus a i a imaginary. I basically have to take this denominator and complete the square um, to make it real and then bring the complex piece up here and then I can separate it into a real plus i times a imaginary. Okay, I'm not going to do that for you here but I'll show you the answer. Um, the answer is that the magnitude of a is equal to um, f naught over m times the square root of k over m minus omega squared minus omega squared um, plus omega squared b squared over m squared okay all right and we'll we'll discuss the the, the shape of this curve versus frequency in class um, and i'll write down the phase to um, and you know it's less important well I'll talk about the phase a little bit but it's less important from what I want you to understand um, than the amplitude so the phase is the arc tangent of the imaginary part of a over the real part of a and that turns out to be um, minus omega b over m divided by um, k over m minus omega squared Okay, let me stop there. I'll talk more about this in class.